welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you informed on everything that's happened, well, almost everything that's happening in the film, uh, faith film industry. Now, normally I'd like to really share with you people and who they are and why they're doing what they're doing. But today we're going to talk mostly about a specific project. Now, of course, we still have people on it, so I want to introduce who my first guest is. I'm going to have three guests for you today. But here's my first one, and he has been on the show before. Chip Rossetti has dedicated his career to making movies only in the Christian faith-based and family genres, and has written, directed, and or produced 22 feature films in these genres. He has also developed multiple television shows, of one of which we're going to talk about today, and his nine documentaries and ten shorts and animated shorts to his credit. Chip Rossetti and Rossetti Productions have their biggest success with the release of their award-winning series, The Dream Motel, and the upcoming End of Times miniseries, which again is what we're talking about today, The Dark. Chip, welcome back. Welcome back to Faith on Film, man. Hey, it's always good to be here with you, Isaac. I always love having a few minutes to talk with you. Yeah, it is fun, isn't it? Now, last time we got to learn all about you and who you were, and by now everybody should, uh, should know. And if you don't know, if you haven't seen the program that I did with Chip, just go over to the YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and check out his show. But today we're going to talk about a, something that, uh, that you have just finished up recently and is about to be released here over the next couple of weeks, I think it is. Um, and we really want to get into that because it's an amazing production. It's a, it's a series, an end time series. Before we even start, let's take a look at the trailer here real quick. Look at me. Look at me. They're on, they're on their way. Promise me, Peter. Promise, promise me you'll find him. Peace. All I ever wanted was peace. It's time to go find Daniel. None of you even know what's out there. We have to do something. You are the only one that can get us there. We leave first thing in the morning. How did they know we were here, Jeremy? What? Five minutes later, they're right on top of us. How did you know? We're not leaving him behind. You don't have a choice, Blake. Neither does he. We've been expecting you. Peter, father of Daniel, who is in the keep of the dark. I know what's real and what's true. Don't you want what's real? Only you, Mommy. I want to be with you. Hey, somebody. Somebody help us. Hey. His fear is my joy. His pain will be your pain. And his suffering will be proof. I want to see my son. We all want things, Mr. Braxton. my time. Wow, man, that's something nobody should miss. What, uh, what got into you that you decided to, number one, start doing series and then pick an end time type series? Well, to answer your first question, uh, right now, that's where the, the industry seems to be going is more yeah. towards series and miniseries as opposed to the the feature stuff especially with everything that's going on right now uh with theatrical releases yeah. um most of the vod platforms now they're looking for something that people can watch and then watch more of and watch more of so the idea of a series or a miniseries uh is is really kind of where the industry is going right now a lot of people are even taking something that was developed and written to be a feature and turning it into a series or a miniseries of sorts um, the Dark is it, it, kind of like that. It actually developed from a, a, a feature that we had written five or six years ago, um, and then <clears throat> we actually expounded on the story and went from being a two-hour, uh, you know, a two-hour mm -hmm. feature to being a five-part miniseries. That uh, yeah, it'll start on October first. Um, was is we're actually officially announcing the release date is October first, um, and it's it's a, it's an end of time story unlike. I think any that has ever been done, especially in this genre before. Um, I think too many times we see this sort of uh, people tend to try to romanticize the end of times and 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 kind of play with kid gloves. You know, we uh -huh. we show it the way I at least the way that I truly believe it's going to be. It's going to be hell on earth, and that's the kind of story that we depict. It's an ensemble cast um, that makes their way through this entire adventure for five episodes. Um, 
and it's really something unique and I think it's going to be something that's really enticing for people to watch and not just watch one part of but want to watch and have to watch right. all five parts of right now so do you actually start it let's say when the rapture happens we didn't really go that direction you know there's too many different schools of thought so we don't right. really touch on this whether this is before or after um, it's just a story that exists basically in the seventh year of the tribulation or towards you know the, the towards the end right. of the great tribulation um, so you know and, and and really the the Antichrist has come to rule uh, on the earth and it's it is literally hell on earth because of that and and I think that wow. what our what our characters actually experience in there I think is going to be something that is very relatable to people that are going to watch it Wow well uh, again it's coming out October let's let's yeah let's go ahead and date this program because somebody might be watching this now next year and they're gonna say oh it's coming out you know but uh, it would have already been out but it's coming out this October 2020 right yep October 1st 2020 is the official release date of it um, and uh, it's gonna be all over in a bunch of different places that it's gonna be primarily it's gonna be on pure flicks um, is they're the ones that picked it up for that and uh, but what's also going to be eventually I don't know if it's going to be the same time mm -hmm. but it's also going to eventually be available on uh, on uh, Amazon and, and places like that and as well as in broadcast and of course on uh, DVD as well so. uh, and where else maybe uh, parables <laughs> maybe parables that's you know we, we, we certainly are open to uh, you know, we're certainly open to, to any avenue that we can put it out there. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. But, um, <laughs> well, so listen, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break now. We're going to come back next. I'm going to talk to the principal actor in your series, um, Kevin uh, Sizemore. All right? Yeah, sounds for, good. Thanks, thanks for being with us, man. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back with Kevin Sizemore. Encourage TV family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No, maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. The Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. Welcome back to Faith on Film. Uh, we've been talking about this new series coming out this October called The Dark. And of course, we just spoke with uh, Chip Rossetti, the producer, director, and I think writer of it. Uh, and now we're going to talk to the principal uh, actor of it, the star of The Dark. Now, we've had him on the show before, so I'm, I'm just glad to welcome him back. Kevin Sizemore. On the small screen, Sizemore is known as Anthony the U.S. Marshal on the Emmy-nominated series Fear the Walking Dead, Flight 462, as well as uh, the hot-headed Gary Humphrey on uh, the series Resurrection. Now, over the years, and I remember saying this last time, over the years, Kevin has gained reputation for playing characters with a checkered past. Now, I know him, so I don't think he has a checkered past for real. He just plays one on TV. Uh, and now, of course, he's the star of the series The Dark. Welcome back, Kevin. How are you doing, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having <laughs> me. Good to see you. Now, 
on this on this series, I think you play a pastor, right? Yeah, yes, I do. Now, is this a pastor with a checkered past, or is it just a good, clean pastor from the get-go? No, he, you know, he's a good guy, but he uh, has to do a few things after things uh, are exposed to him that he normally really? wouldn't ever think about doing. Oh, wow. Now, how has this role been different, say, than some of the other roles that you played? I mean, have you played in a in a movie or a series that has to do with the end times? Uh, no, no, not well. I mean, you know, when we did the uh, Fear of the Walking Dead 462, okay, everyone thinks that's the end of the times, mm -hmm. but that was a segue show between The Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead. Our our, mm -hmm. our project is like a segue. Okay. So that wasn't the end of time. That was more like where the virus came from one coast to the next. So this is really the first time we ever got down and dirty uh, in the woods playing mm -hmm. the end of times. So yeah, it, it was a great experience. Now I was talking to Chip, and I asked him if, if this had to, you know, this was if the rapture was involved in this, uh, and he said not really. It really kind of takes place, um, sort of like at the end of the seven year tribulation. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. correct. Now, uh, yeah, it does. And, and what 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 comes to fruition after we figure all this out is, uh, my wife has is deceased, and, mm -hmm. and that was very unfortunate during this time. But there's another discovery that happens while we're um, kind of hiding out in this church, me and a, a band full of believers, there's probably six or seven of us. Mm -hmm. And um, once we discover that something could still be out there that is precious to one of us, we all band together to go try to find it. Now, the problem with that is we're going out into the end of times, which as we know, what is the end of times? Well, we don't know. No one's ever been there before. And when we think of this thing called the dark, well, what is the dark? Mm -hmm. So is it a person? Is it a thing? Is it what? So we're, we're going out in to try to find out what it is and at the same time try to protect ourselves from things we don't know what is even out there. Wow. Now, I have to admit that the times we're living in right now almost feels like those end of times, man. Everything yeah. that's going on right now is, is um, I, I would have never imagined we would be in these situations. No, you could have, you could have put, uh, you know, the chips on the table and no one would have ever predicted this. So it's, it's, it's a very scary time for many people. Yeah. And, um, and hopefully we'll, We'll be able to move forward. I mean, we're never going to be the same. We're never going to be what we were. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can be a better version somehow, a better version than uh, from what it was to what we can do in the future. I, I hope. hope. I certainly hope so. Um, of course, that means that this series is actually at a very timely. I mean, it's coming out in a very timely way. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we uh, we shot this this past year in in Kentucky, and um, you know, it was so different because yeah, I look back when we shot this compared to now and it's kind of it's kind of weird how certain things fall in line because I was talking to Chip about this recently how this project is just absolutely perfect for what is out there now and I think people will gravitate to that I, I really do yeah now how was it working with Chip because you know he said that you were a prima donna just so difficult to work with no he did oh, yeah. not say that <laughs> no no he was too I'm kidding <laughs> no I you know I'm I'm I verbally knew of Chip and we've talked on the phone and we knew of each other but we never mm -hmm. had the opportunity to work with each other uh, he worked with a lot of my friends right. and I just never had the pleasure and then when this script came across um, my desk it was uh, right away it was 100% yeah I just thought it was very interesting I thought it was it was a different take on mm -hmm. on the world that we lived in and who would have known like you said earlier that we would be here now but it was just a different take and I've never seen I've never seen this project done with these type of characters mm -hmm. in this way. And that's what attracted me to it. And, and I love ensemble pieces. I love when you have a band full of people coming together. You don't just have you know one person that it's all about that person. And yeah, you might have one person who's leading the pack, but you have a group of people that are there right. to to, uh, to make the story move. And and we needed a handful of episodes to make sure you can get in to every, every character that we have, because there's some wonderful characters that need to be fleshed out. Now, what do you hope people take away from this series? Well, you know, I, I want them to think about what, especially with now, I mean, what would you do if you're in this situation? Mm -hmm. like, how would you handle this situation? Hopefully better than maybe some of us did in, in, in the dark. Um, you know, you have different actors that, that are involved, in, like uh, Kelly Bartram, her character is a completely different character than like a Jessica Bell. Um, but there's there's two solid female characters there, um, and then you have two guys like like Dylan Cruz and and uh, Alan Hogan, for example. You know, you see them together a lot, but they're still completely opposite. And then 
for a while, you know, uh, the character of John Wells and I, we kind of butt heads a little bit because John is more the, I've been out here, I've seen what's out there, you don't want to go out there. And then once we decide that we are going, mm -hmm. John has to say, well, you know, then if you're going to go, I have to go with you. So it's, right. it's really interesting. And then once you get out into the dark, you see some really, really interesting characters, uh, you know, such as, as Martin Kleba, uh, uh, Sharon Lanier, and of course, Silvio, um, Silvio Bush. I mean, you see some really wonderful people. And some of these names you've heard of and you've seen, and some of them you might have not, mm -hmm. but they give some great performances, really, really great performances. That's awesome. Well, you just mentioned Martin Kleber. And uh, interestingly enough, he's my guest on the next segment. So that's a great transition you just helped me with. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time. I know I enjoyed when I had you on the full show last time, and it was great to have you again once here today. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the series, all right? I appreciate it, man. And, and, and again, just hope everyone enjoys the dark yeah. and all the actors we threw out there, even like the Sarah Clevelands and the Bishop Stevens and all the other actors out there. I think you guys are going to connect with at least one of us. Thank and you. hopefully uh, that will put you in to what you would do if you're ever in this situation. So thanks for having me. You bet. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Got a postcard from the grandkids. They went to the ark. Yeah. What does it say? Well, Annie says they had a blast and that it's really, really big. Everything looks big to a six-year-old. Well, Hudson says it's even bigger than the castle. It can't be that big. Can it? Go ahead, think bigger. Just one life, a perfect day. And your heart starts beating hard. I'm gonna keep on dreaming. I wanna feel the love. I wanna get the feeling. I wanna get the feeling. To Viva and Film, we've been talking, of course, about the series The Dark. Now, I'm really excited about my guest, my next guest on this segment, because I'm a huge fan of Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean. You, know, you say tomato, I say tomato. Um, let me introduce him. Martin Kleva is an American actor, uh, character actor, and a stunt performer. He's best known for his role as Marty, one of Captain Jack Sparrow's Black Pearl crew in Pirates of the Caribbean, one through three and five. He missed four. Let's we'll find out what that's about. And now he's here because he is in several episodes of The Dark. Marty. Should I call you Marty? Martin? Uh, yeah, fine. <laughs> and it's Clever. Clever. it is Caribbean. It is Caribbean. Good. Because, you know, you say Caribbean, so he goes, no, it's Caribbean. It's one R, two Bs. So yes. it's Caribbean. Caribbean. Good. Well, yeah, I'm, we, glad I, I'm glad I got it straightened out now. Yeah, so, we, we, we found that out when we were down there. It's like, we're on the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's like, no, this is the Caribbean. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, listen, it's so good to meet you. I've never met you before, uh, and, and this is very exciting. I, I'll admit to you, my grandson is just, um, he helps me with the show, and he's just so thrilled. He says, you're, you're interviewing him? So, um, yes, yes, you're a big superstar in our home. We, I own all the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, films. <laughs> so, so, listen, uh, first of all, welcome. Welcome to Faith on Film. Um, Thank you. Now, my first question right off the top is, 
Is this your first, because I know you've been on so many movies and TV series and things. Is this your first faith-based series? Uh, yeah, I believe it is. Um, I was I was going to say The Cape, but The Cape was more of a, um, more of a, uh, based on faith in humanity, mm -hmm. not a cop, whatever. But as far as actually having to do with um, The Big Man the and big the other one, uh, the, yeah, <laughs> the first time, uh you know, yeah, we have wow. to be faithful. Well, that's great. Now, great guys, too. The director was great. The writer, yes. um, great guy. And uh, I was honored to be able to, you don't always get to do something like this, you know. And, and then going to uh, film sure. it back east, it was, you know, it was cool. My mm -hmm. my room had about 100 um, ladybugs in the middle of the winter uh, crawling around at night. So I, I slept with the sheets like, up to here. <laughs> but I was like, okay, this is cool. Whatever. How did you hear about the series? Um, they just reached out to me and um, okay. asked if I would be interested in doing it. I think I might have met Chip at a, um, an autograph signing in either okay. Knoxville, Tennessee, or uh, maybe Lexington, Kentucky. I wasn't sure, but right. he reached out, and I was like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, not that I don't turn down work, but if it's something cool and interesting and, you know, I get to get out and mm -hmm. go somewhere, um, I, I, you know, I, I love doing it. So just something to get out of the house. Wow. And as long as it's not, you know, something really, I've done some bad stuff too, like uh, Feast 2 and 3, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've done some crazy, well, not Sharknado bad, but pretty much close to it. But hey, those things are a huge hit, right? So Of course. Yes, they are. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that, uh, how, how did you enjoy doing a, a faith-based film or series? It was great, it was, you know, because um, I, I was on the bad side, but there was just, I don't want to say an Anakin Skywalker in me, but there was just a little bit because in the end, I'm like, uh, right before I meet the, my demise, you know, I, I kind of help the other guys get away. And then I, oh, wow. you know, unfortunately, meet my end. So, so, so you, you play a bad guy in this series? I'm, a, I'm kind of a kind of like the henchman, uh, you know, the, the, the bad guy's right hand man kind of, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good until very at the end of my life when I realize I mean, it's, it's time to do what's right. And, so you know, you're, you're redeemed. You know. experience redemption. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Now, I understand you were in a motorcycle accident uh, recently. Yeah, just recently, um, right before the 4th of July, I was just taking my bike out and uh, buddying up. It's from, you know, Johnny Depp gave it to me. And it was probably about a $100,000 uh, mini chopper and Johnny autographed it and had his picture painted on the gas tank and it was in a couple magazines you know blah 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 and I never really wrote it and my wife was always you know don't I don't want you riding it blah 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 and I'm like but I wanted to get it out so I literally they say when you get in an accident usually where where is it within a mile of your own house right yeah I wasn't even a mile from my house and I was going down the road and all of a sudden the bike just started getting really squirrely and uh I ended up hitting a tree doing 30, and uh, yeah, I broke my left hip. Wow. It's kind of like the Bo Jackson injury where the ball and the femur meet, that thin part, it just snapped right out there, and uh, I knew I was in trouble, so instead of calling the ambulance and getting my wife mad, I called her first, called the tow truck company, and waited for the tow truck company to come get the bike so nobody would steal it, and then I said, oh, let's go back to the house so I can get my phone charger for because i'm going to be in the icu for a while so made her drive back up to the house get my mask get a phone charger you know and then i was in the hospital for five days oh wow. and, uh, i'm good to, I'm, I'm up and running i'm not not running but i'm up and walking and um i'm well, supposed to be on a team but i'm not i'm not i only weigh 85 pounds so <laughs> well you know I, I, I hope you're okay, and I hope that bike is okay because, man, that bike uh, with uh, Johnny Depp's signature. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty total, but I, I think it would cost about ten grand to redo it. And you know, part of me, my dad, before he passed away, he took it to one of those um, Barrett Jackson things, and uh, I wouldn't let him sell it. So I told him a hundred thousand, you know, and he got an offer for fifty. And thinking now, I should have. <laughs> Because it only cost twelve to make, I would have made a bunch of money. I would have still had a good hip, you know. I'd have been a good boy. But. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, listen, right. 
Martin, thank you so much for taking the time. I tell you, it's a thrill to me to have you here because, again, I am a huge fan of... I mean, I know you've done a lot of things. I got a movie in those seats. Oh, absolutely. We've seen Pirates right here several times. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, folks, thank you so much again, Mark. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV. Family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Seriously, how big was it? I'm telling you, it's humongous. So it was bigger than a castle? Totally. And when you're there, there's so many cool things to do that you forget about time. No way. That only happens in one place. Go ahead. Think bigger. Welcome back to Faith on Film. You know I am a huge fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, so it was a special treat for me today to get to interview Marty. But I'm also a huge fan of the Dark series, so if you want to learn more about it, just go to Facebook at Rossetti Productions. That's at Rossetti Productions on Facebook, and you'll learn all about where to get it, where to find it, where to see it, all about the Dark series. Of course, don't forget Parables TV. It's a great place where you can find a lot of other great content to watch for you and your family. Movies, documentaries, reality shows, just a lot of great content for you to watch. Uh, simply go to parables.tv. That's parables.tv. And of course, don't forget, I want you to write me. I really want to hear from you. Give me some ideas of who else maybe I can interview. Uh, simply write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Well, don't forget, if you want to keep your soul healthy, you got to feed it some good healthy entertainment. Till next week, take care. <laughs>